Intensity, that means on defense, being in the stance, talking, and being active. And then we got to do a great job penetrating the jump stop against the zone, all right? Let's go! Ole Miss and Mississippi State are the second oldest rival in the country uh, in all of college basketball and the oldest in the SEC. You know, 252 previous meetings, that's an incredible number. So, you know, for the people of this state and for those two universities and obviously for our fans and our alums, this is the biggest game of the year. Uh, it always has been and always will be. Capped it up and missed it. Put it up and got it blocked. Bobots come out of the ball. Weatherspoon drops it to Sword. He drives to the hole. Back to Weatherspoon. He lays it up and won't go. Tapped in. And Weatherspoon, I think, tapped in his own miss. Bothersome to the Bulldogs as far as running their offense. Haven't been able to get inside that zone much. Now the Lumen's going to fire over it and hit from on top. He just buried a three and put the Bulldogs up 7 5. Newman back to Thomas. Dumps it down in there for a little jumper on the way and good by Gavin Ware. Sapardo open on the wind, fires and answers the three. Johnny Sapardo out of the corner, open and scoring a three point field goal for Fred Thomas. Greg Sword retrieves it, throws it inside for a slam. He threw it up near the rim, and Gavin Ware slammed it in the goal. Rodas get it to Sword, lob it in, and a jam on a nice lob and a one hand jam by Gavin Ware. I think we played solid the whole game. Um, our first half wasn't, you know, as, as good of a half as we wanted it to be, but I mean, I think it was a good half. On the baseline, here comes Weatherspoon, had contact, put it up and in anyway. Both, both those freshmen are, are really doing a great job for us, and they're getting a lot of experience. Uh, they both played 35 minutes in that game. That's a huge number of minutes for anybody, much less a freshman. Uh, and I've been really impressed with both those kids. And then, uh, you know, Eric Holman's coming on now. He's getting more and more minutes after missing three and a half months. So our, our three freshmen uh, are, are getting a lot of experience this year. Bulldogs get a steal. Gavin Ware comes up with a loose basketball. Weatherspoon drives baseline, drives it all the way underneath and lays it in. Throws cross court to Perez. Perez gonna drive it, step back. Had his shot blocked by Fred Thomas, taken off. Bulldogs try to run it down, do underneath with Weatherspoon who lays it in and good at the buzzer to make it a two-point game at halftime. Gavin made a great pass to Q at the end of the first half. Uh, they probably shot it a little bit early and we got it back to cut it to two. And uh, that was a big momentum boost going into halftime. The chase down off the block shot by Fred and Gavin grabbed the rebound. I think he just kind of threw it up front and hit me and I tripped. And I still don't know how I managed to um, catch up to the ball, but it was a big basket and we needed, and we, it was a momentum play going into halftime. And the Bulldogs are down by a couple, but it could have been more as Weatherspoon scores the last four here for the Bulldogs in the final minute of the first half. And Ole Miss takes a 38 to 36 lead into the dressing room. Get it to Newman, he curls and kicks to Weatherspoon, gets a good look at a three and fires and scores, and the Bulldogs get back to within three. Get it reversed to Newman, drives back to Ware, goes for the goal and lays it up over the iron and in. Newman open, firing again. Another three from Elite Newman. He has hit four threes in the ball game. I think we played better. You know, I think we was more passionate, had more intensity about it. And, um, you know, I think that was, that showed us how good we can be that the second half of the game. We're under the halfway point, driving as Newman takes a jumper on the way. He penetrated to within 14 on the baseline and made it. Shoots it to Zapardo on top and uh, going to take a shot at the buzzer in and good by Newman. He let it go just before the clock went to zero. Go to the corner to Reddy, who's going to circle it back out front. Newman's going to fire a three on the way. Yes, again. Boy, Malik is feeling it here in the second half. It was a very, very uh, good second half for us, and uh, we made our foul shots down the stretch. IJ made a, a couple big uh, free throws in the last couple of minutes when it was a one-on-one -on -one up seven. Uh, those were important ones to knock down to put it back to nine. Did a good job of only four turnovers in the second half, 
and, and yet Ole Miss wouldn't go away. I mean, it went all the way to the uh, to the wire, and we were glad to hold on and, and get the victory. For Dorsey, and the ball goes off to Perez, and he throws it up the floor. This one's in the record book, 83-77 is the final score. Mississippi State with a victory here in the Humphrey Coliseum. Knowing that we had a win, uh, I mean, the crowd was excited. We was excited. Um, you know, I just think it was... It was one of those great victories that you can celebrate. fell down. I mean, we are up 17 to 8, and then they went like on a 10-0 run to go up 18-17. It's a game of runs. Uh, you, you guys did a great job hanging tough. We want to have great preparation tomorrow. We want to get our rest today. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy beating Ole Miss. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 We've lost a lot of close games, so the, there was a lot of elation uh, if, with everybody. And it was a great feeling to beat Ole Miss, uh, number one, and then to get our first SEC win of the year. Uh, you know, both were really important, and our guys really uh, deserved it and worked hard and uh, had a good week of preparation leading up to that with the two practices prior. family of crossovers with intuitive all-wheel drive. See driving in a more confident light. For a limited time, choose Nissan Rogue and save up to 1000 or save up to 1500 on Murano. Get to Nissan, proud partner of the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Look at the camera right up. thing I think is so great about uh, Mississippi State is the family atmosphere that's here within our athletic department, on our campus, in our community. Everybody's supporting each other and I really love that. And uh, our women are so good, you know, Vic Schaefer and his staff have done a tremendous job uh, building their program and they're a top, you know, 20 team. So I love to support them and uh, it was really fun to be there in the atmosphere in the hump on Sunday. Uh, where it was packed, the biggest crowd in the history of the state of Mississippi for a women's game. That was special. Our team had a good time. We have good kids and they had fun rooting them on and that was really nice to see too, to all sit together and, and, and really show our support for our women. Everybody supports each other. You know, we go to their games. At our games, you see they come as a group and they attend our games. I think we pretty much, when we do run into each other a lot in the training room, we pretty much talk to each other. We support them a lot. She is a bucket getter. I don't know how, but she do it.
to actually watch watch a game courtside right there without being on the floor. So, you know, we just, well, I just encourage them and just be happy for them. You know, they're a ranked team and everything they're doing, they're accomplishing a lot. And I just want to be there to support and just witness it. Road games or home games, you know, we're probably not shooting as much as we normally would with a shooting round because we're just so uh, short-handed in terms of our team and try to save our legs for the games. So we're really spending a lot of time going through what we're going to defend that night. That's the, our biggest focus in a walkthrough for the game right now is just going through what they're going to do and then going through their out-of-bounds plays and then also preparing for any kind of tweaks that we were doing offensively. Uh, whether that be attacking the press or attacking the zone or changing up a, uh, a play or putting in something new uh, in preparation for that opponent. Let's go. You got two minutes and 47 seconds. Where are we going, coach? Freshman right there. Go ahead, Freddie. All right, let's go. Go ahead, Freddie. Get this on camera. I'm going to make it. Come on, Freddie. 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 It's always fun for our players. I've done that forever. Uh, I, I think at the end, uh, when we go on the road, it's just kind of a, an old uh, thing that I've always done with my teams. And they have fun doing it to see uh, who makes the first one and how long it takes. And uh, so it's pretty cool. And the players always enjoy that. There's a swish, Fred. Two in a row. <laughs> One for three is pretty good percentage. We out of here. Coaches versus cancer is something that's very uh, dear to me. And I think it's important uh, and, and, and uh, to every American. We have uh, an epidemic of cancer that uh, we're trying to fight. My own daughter, Meredith, is a pediatric oncology nurse uh, out in Los Angeles and deals with little kids that have cancer. But, you know, I've had so many friends and members of family that have been afflicted with cancer. And anything we can do to raise awareness and, more importantly, raise money for research. Uh, there's been a lot of exciting work being done. Uh, throughout our country and throughout the world in terms of uh, finding cures for cancer and, uh, you know, making that so that we have less of it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a brutal disease. So uh, you know, we're just bringing awareness and support uh, for all the people that are afflicted with cancer and trying to help find the cure, uh, which ultimately we will. We knew from watching film on them it was just going to be a tough, hard-nosed brawl. I mean, they played one game against Memphis State uh, 
at towards the end of the non-conference where there were 91 fouls called between the two teams and 99 fouls shots attempted. Uh, and uh, we knew it was going to be a physical game and they're very tough, hard-nosed, big, strong and they really took it to us uh, physically and uh, wore us down with their physicality. Gives it off to Weatherspoon on top, he drives, stops, fires a 16-footer in and good. Now to Carrera, going to fire from up top, missed a three, long rebound, grabbed by Thornwell, given to Kaichinus, he puts it up, it's blocked by Holman, a nice block by Holman. Kicks it back out, ready, passes up a shot, back cross to the baseline, Swords 15 footers in and good and we're tied. And throws it to the corner and gets it to Sword, he drives it in there, puts it up on the move, gets it to go and draws the foul and that's vintage Craig Sword right there. So Silva makes a free throw and from the outside and IJ Reddy swishes it from up top. Starts to drive, gets to the baseline, 15 footer on the way and good. Nice job by Weatherspoon to manufacture a shot. I think we played hard. Um, some things we didn't capitalize on. Like a couple of runs we had, we just couldn't get over the hump. But um, us playing hard, I think that went very well. I thought we competed, you know, we came out uh, and, and took a lead and had a couple shots to really build on our league that were wide open. Uh, and then uh, we didn't handle their pressure well. We really had a hard time getting into our offense and started just going ball screen after ball screen because we couldn't even make it. They're overplaying everything up the line so much. Uh, and, uh, you know, we ended up, you know, right there and they, they had a shot at the buzzer in the first half to put them up nine. Up to Reddy, on the drive, all the way underneath, reverse lay up on the iron in and good. He, he just flipped that one up, pretty nice play. I think we first came out kind of kind of shocked by the pressure and how they were denying everything, mess up the offense, but I wanted to get us into scoring position for our team so we can make a run and try to come back and win the game. 14 on the shot clock, Newman gonna fire from three point range and he buries one from out deep and that's a good sign. Bulldogs get it up, Newman on the move, fires and scores again from three-point range. Malik heats it up with his third three of the ball game. We just came together, you know, as, as a unit, um, like we should have did in the first half. We just kept on fighting, kept on fighting, and, you know, unfortunately, um, Craig swore he was, wasn't able to play the whole second half because of injuries. Um, certain guys wasn't able to be as aggressive as they would like to be because of foul trouble. Um, IJ, who was playing great for us, he had it going. Um, you know, he turned his ankle, so he wasn't able to perform to his best of his ability the last eight minutes of the game. So, I mean, it was just a lot of little nicks and necks that, that really hurt us down the stretch. That, um, you know, I think we had all our players um, and everyone was healthy and not a foul trouble. I think we could have won. I thought our team has no quit. They have, they have a lot of fight in them. They're tough. I thought Chicken really competed hard. It was unfortunate that he was cramping up a couple times late, but you know, they all competed and, and you know, tried their hardest. And that's all you can ask in a coach is to do your very best. That's what we're trying to do. If you do your very best and give your very all, uh, that's all I can ask of, of my team and my staff. And, and that's what our expectations are. And then good things will happen. Bulldogs fought and fought and fought, but this South Carolina club was just more physical tonight. And final score, 84 to 74, South Carolina over Mississippi State.